action of the season so far when they host the defending world champs. The San Francisco Giants will have to face a tough righty in Colin McHugh as the Astros look to use home field advantage here at Minute Maid Park. Astros baseball starts right now. Live from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, Root Sports brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight, as the Astros open a nine-game homestand, they play the first of two against the defending world champion, San Francisco Giants. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jeff Blum tonight. Alan Ashby has a couple of nights off. You and Ash did the four-game series, and the Astros split that set against the Angels over the weekend. So they come back home now, starting their longest homestand of the season to date, and with a 500 record at home, hoping to really start improving upon that tonight, Jeff. Yeah, I expect that offense to make those adjustments, bring some of that good hitting they had out there on the West Coast out here to Minute Maid Park and start unleashing it in front of their hometown fans. We will see some changes in personnel during the week, including tomorrow night starting pitcher Brett Oberholzer now is back from his blister problem which goes back to spring training and he will be starting tomorrow night. I think it's a good spot for him to be in that five hole in that rotation is a good spot for him to go out there and take advantage of an opportunity here this home set. Luke Gregerson is back tonight from his family emergency leave and the Astros regain the services of their closer. It's always good when you could add a little more depth to that bullpen. He's such a huge cog. Seven saves on the season. It'll be great to have him back. And George Springer is playing for Double-A Corpus Christi tonight in San Antonio after suffering this concussion, slamming into the wall here. And hopefully it will only be a one-game Double-A rehab assignment for George. He'll bat second tonight. And A.J. Hinch says he hopes that uh, George will do some base running and, and cope with everything just fine and be back tomorrow night, Jeff. I think he's going to be great. Obviously the talent's there, but I think having that energy back in that clubhouse and in that dugout is going to be a huge bonus for the Houston Astros. Coming up, the champs are here. A big homestand for the Astros starts with a visit from the defending World Series champs. Blummer and I take a look at the San Francisco Giants when we come back.
two-game series in interleague play, meeting for the first time since 2012. And the Giants do bring an awful lot from last year's club, although they're without the former Astro Hunter Pence. He's out with a broken arm, could be back soon. And Pablo Sandoval left through free agency. Still a formidable team, Jeff. Yeah, a couple of missing parts, but Bruce Bochy's doing a good job of managing these guys and getting them ready to play every day. Buster Posey is one guy he can call on. Sometimes it's at first base, but usually behind the plate. Yeah, he's a quiet leader out there. You think about what this kid's done, and the career numbers are amazing, but he's also working with the pitching staff on a daily basis, too, which is great. Moving to first base every once in a while. Only 11 RBIs on the season for me, which is a little interesting, but still playing 500 baseball with this ball club. He was the MVP in 2012. Angel Pagan, a big contributor last year. He's been hitting third in the absence of Pence, and Brandon Belt is on a roll lately, too, for them. Yeah, it's interesting. Hopefully they can hold him down here. No home runs on the year from Brandon Belt, but that's just a matter of time before he breaks out. Coming up, whip around. The starting rotation is finally rounding into form, but you might be surprised at just how good they've been already this season. Julia Morales has a look at the numbers next. World Series titles in the last five seasons, and they don't have all those rings without some great arms in that starting rotation. That is something the Houston Astros were hoping to improve on this year. They bolstered the bullpen. As far as the starting rotation goes, we saw a lot of familiar faces come back from years past. Well, it is our pitching performance powered by Kubota that Astros starting staff talking about. We've got to start with Dallas Keuchel. The ace is 4-0 so far this year, picking up where he left off last season. He's been a solid number one for this group. And Scott Feldman here put together another quality start. You see the ERA there in the bottom. Eighth in Major League Baseball. 369 for these guys. Roberto Hernandez being a huge addition to the club this year, coming out strong in his start. And also Colin McHugh, who will be going tonight. 11 wins in his last decisions, or excuse me, winning his last 11 decisions. But let's take a look at the ERAs and, and other stats compared to 2014. Let's see where the improvements are. And of course, the, the starter ERA is down. The whip, though, is the best in Major Leagues, 109, and the strikeout-to-walk ratio. Strikeouts have been a big part of what these Astros starting pitchers can really do. Lots of improvement, guys, and we'll get to see Colin McHugh, one of the guys who's been big as far as that goes for this Houston Astro ball club. There he is right there, Julia. Thank you for that. The Giants are known for their good pitching as well. They have a rookie on the mound tonight, and we'll be learning about him as we go. Chris Heston, the right-hander. The Astros take the field here, hoping to do something about this 8-8 eight and eight start at home. They were swept by the Texas Rangers in their last three-game series here, and they really would like to rev things up. 
their 201 home batting average is not a source of pleasure to this club right now. And if this nine game homestand goes the way they'd like it to, then they're going to continue to garner a lot of headlines around Major League Baseball, Jeff. Yeah, if that offense has to get going. Uh, the pitching for me has been phenomenal. What's making the pitching good, too, is that defense behind them. Val, Val Buena, for me, at third base is probably one of the more athletic and uh, more exciting guys to watch at third base. But pitching and defense will keep you in ball games. Timely hitting will help you win some ball games. But I'm, I'm, I'm probably like most Astro fans who want to see that middle part of the lineup start lighting it up here at Minute Maid Park. Well, they're still meeting at home plate, so Colin McHugh can't warm up right now. Here's the lineup he'll be facing tonight. Lead off man is the DH tonight, Nori Aoki. It's Joe Panic at second base. Very good young player. Angel Pagans, the center fielder, batting third in the absence of Hunter Pence. The cleanup man is catcher Buster Posey. Brandon Belts at first base with former Astro Justin Maxwell in right field playing for Pence. Brandon Crawford's the shortstop. Matt Duffy at third. Gregor Blanco in left field. On the mound for the Houston Astros is going to be Colin McHugh. Get a chance to look at the numbers on the year for the young man. 39 innings pitched. He's given up 36 hits. Struck out 33 in those 39 innings, allowing a 245 batting average. Has never faced the San Francisco Giants. Last outing out there in L.A. Figured in the, did not figure in the decision, going seven and a third, getting seven strikeouts in that, holding the Angels to two runs. And playing behind Colin McHugh here at Minute Maid Park. Robbie Grossman in left, Jake Marisnik in center, Colby Rasmus out there in right field. Across the infield, you're going to see Valbuena at third, Marwin Gonzalez at short, Altuve and Carter on the right-hand side. Castro the Astro working with Colin McHugh this evening here at Minute Maid Park. And as the roof is closed, there's rain in the area. Could be the case all week if the forecast does hold. But it's been uh, about 80 degrees for a high out this afternoon, so cooler than normal this time of year. Giants are here for just two games, and then it's a four-game series with Toronto and three with Oakland on this nine-game homestand for the Astros. The Giants had that eight-game losing streak in April, but now they've revved it up. They're coming off a seven and three homestand, and Ioki has been one of the factors for them. Very steady, hitting 282, one homer, nine runs batted in, DHing tonight. And he has a 361 on base average as you see there. He's drawn 14 walks, and that's the same number as his strikeout number for the season. Good man to have in this top spot. Valbuena's in on the grass at third, and shortened up at second is Altuve. First pitch from Colin McHugh. His ball one. Oak, he played for Kansas City against the Giants in the World Series last year. He made the switch of leagues, and it's worked out very well so far for Bruce Bochy's team. Two balls, no strikes. And now 3-0 to Aoki, who's hit 222 in his last 16 games. Big off-season acquisition for the Giants. Yeah. You really don't need to add too many parts to your ball club when you win a world championship. No, sir. And there is a 12 pitch walk. That is exceptionally rare for Colin McHugh. Only his eighth walk of the season. He's in his 40th inning. Sometimes you wonder about things from up here without having any clue, but he had to stand there uh, waiting to throw his warm up pitches while the umpires were going over the ground rules and home plate. It sounds like something that shouldn't throw a guy off his game, but eh, you know, starting pitchers sometimes have a little jitters here and there. They're all different, aren't they? Some call them jitters, some call them quirks. <laughs> These guys have issues when they're on the mound, but I, I'm with you. It was interesting to see the umpires standing on home plate. Usually they can take that conference off to the side and let a guy get loose. <laughs> they can do that. <laughs> Strike one to Joe Panic. Panic's on an eight game hitting streak with a 284 average, two homers, 10 runs batted in. Really one of the nice additions to this Giants club last year coming up and playing so well in his rookie season. Has not made an error this year. Bueno off the line just on the grass at third. McHugh gets in on him and gets a ground ball and that's one thing he can do so well with that late movement Jeff. Yeah it's that cut fastball that he's developed some might call it a slider but I'm sure it's another situation where a guy has a slider grip and he throws it a little bit harder to make that cut action. He can take a little bit off and create that slider, but still good late movement. 
And that's how you jam guys and you set them up inside. Now you can do whatever you want with them. Panic is a product of St. John's University. And started the bat and fouled it there. Well, it's been quite a run for Colin as you saw the numbers on him and you took us through that. It adds up to a 3.23 ERA, but the unbeaten streak is a long one. And he's trying to tie that club record. Mark Portugal won 12 in a row in 93. Wade Miller did a 12 game winning streak of his own in 02. Didn't Wade just do that against the Milwaukee Brewers the yeah. entire time? <laughs> he just beat on that club. It was unbelievable. Miller at Miller Park. That was quite a show. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, different types of pitchers. Drop just off the corner, but that two strike curveball is something that Colin McHugh does like to use. Yeah, and you got to throw it out there off that outside corner and see if a guy's fishing. You get an idea of where the hitter's at and what to do next. And fouled out of play. The Giants started out with four wins and 10 losses through April 20th. They've gone 12 and 6 since then. Going back to 2012, the last season these two teams met, the Giants have beaten the Astros six times in a row. Is that Manny Ramirez in the Minute Maid scoreboard out yeah, there in the Crawford boxes with the camera? That shot is from inside the scoreboard. <laughs> First ever to our knowledge in this park. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. The throw is there waiting. And the tag by Marlon Gonzalez makes it a double play. From two to six on the caught stealing, Jason Castro throwing out his seventh in 18 attempts. You know, a conventional double play, you get Dallas Keuchel out there, you get spoiled with all the double plays on the infield, but sometimes when you got a strikeout pitcher and a good catcher back there, that's how you get the double play. Plenty of time to get Aoki. He had been nine for 11 in steals. Now it's Angel Pagan batting. Pagan, the veteran center fielder, 33 years old. Takes a look at strike one. 322, no homers, eight runs batted in. Jeff talked about his homerless streak, but he has been productive in terms of hits. 339, his last 14 games. And fouls it back. A very important man for them because he covers the ground well in center field at the spacious AT&T Park in San Francisco. And the ability for him to move from the leadoff spot to the number three position, which Hunter Pence occupied when he was healthy, has allowed Ioki to be the leadoff guy, and that's worked well for the Giant offense. Interesting that Colin is still in the set position. Yeah. Line drive loops into shallow left field, and that's a hit. Pagan on the 0 2 pitch takes it the other way. Buster Posey will bat in the first. Just a good piece of hitting by Don. I think he's one of those guys that you might have the ability to get away with having him in that three hole position because if runners are on base, he's a good contact guy. And you see it right here with the two strike count just belaying the ball the other way. Posey is always a threat. He's hit 364 in his last dozen games now. Altuve moves up the middle for him. Strike one to Posey, who's on a four game hitting streak with four homers, 11 runs batted in. Posey, an all star again last year for the third straight year, rookie of the year in 2010. And then, of course, a couple of big World Series prior to last year. He didn't hit as well, but a big part of this team with what the pitching staff accomplished. The ball's two strikes to the 28 year old receiver from Florida State. Lee Mullins is the hitting coach of the Giants. He classifies their team as very aggressive hitters. Bam Bam. Hensley Mullins. Yeah. Ex teammate. That's a fly ball out to right field, backing up Colby Rasmus for round number three. No runs are hit and a man left. The Astros come up against Heston in just a moment.
Giants. It's Jake Marisnik leading off at center field. Jose Altuve follows at second base. Luis Valbuena, the number three hitter, plays third. The DH is Evan Gaddis. In right field, it's Colby Rasmus. The first baseman is Chris Carter. Catcher Jason Castro batting seventh, followed by shortstop Marwin Gonzalez and left fielder Robbie Grossman. On the mound for the San Francisco Giants, it's going to be Chris Heston. Take a look at his numbers, making his seventh start on the season. See what he did last Wednesday, taking the loss against San Diego. It's going to feature a fastball, curveball, slider. Might be a combination of both on that pitch. A changeup. Doesn't throw real hard. 89 miles an hour is what he tops out at. But that slider, if it's effective on those corners, could be a good night for the young man. But look for the Astros to try and spoil that evening for him. Heard his favorite movie is the original Planet of the Apes. Uh oh. Watch out. <laughs> Heston couldn't help it. Jake Marisnik at 319 has three homers, 13 runs batted in. Third baseman Duffy's in tight. And Marisnik takes their strike one for Heston, who has struck out 29 in 37 in the third innings with 10 walks. He's been primarily a ground ball pitcher. And sinks that one down and in. But it's a 1 1 count on Marisnik, who got reunited with his family in Southern California. That's really errant breaking ball there, two and one. His slider has been a big pitch for getting uh, chase swings from hitters, meaning it's out of the strike zone and they go for it, but that wasn't tempting enough. And that one's hit out in the center field. Marisnik got jammed a little bit, but fought it off, got the barrel through in time to get a leadoff single. Yeah, those guys that are going good will usually fight off that ball with two strikes. Jake Marisnik is definitely one of those guys that's seeing the ball and swinging it back quite well right now. Did a good job of bringing those hands in early. Bring that barrel behind it just a little bit, but you see off that label a little bit. But it doesn't matter how hard you hit it sometimes. It's all about location. And the leadoff man with nine steals is aboard for Jose Altuve. Who's fifth in the batting race in the American League at 338. Four homers, 21 runs batted in for the club leader. Marisnik is going. Fly ball goes behind him to right field. Backing up Justin Maxwell, and that's out number one with Marisnik retreating. We just saw ex Astro out there in right field for the San Francisco Giants and Justin Maxwell. We'll see who else is out there. Angel Pygon in center. Gregor Blanco and left on the left side of the infield. Matt Duffy and Brandon Crawford on the right. Joe Panic, Brandon Belt behind home plate. Of course, Buster Posey working with the youngster Chris Heston. Luis Valbuena is next up. Left-handed hitters have done a much better number on Heston than right-handed batters this year. Valbuena at 202 has seven homers, 12 runs batted in. Backs away, it's strike one call. Well, point is interesting to me just in the fact that his batting average is so low. If you'd ask me on the field earlier, you know, how's uh, Luis Valpuena doing? I'd say he's hitting about 240, 250 with right. seven home runs because he has such quality at bats. Yeah. 421 slugging percentage with those seven homers. He's had four doubles, so when he has hit the ball, he's done so with some pop. Marisnik drawing some attention. The Astros are seventh in run scored in the American League with 140. But at home they have scuffled for runs. That's a swing and it's 0-2. They're averaging only 3.2 runs per game in this ballpark compared to 5.6 on the road. Now when you figure out the reason for that, maybe we could. <laughs> You know, put our own rocket in space, but I, I, I can't figure it out. No, there's no readily available answer yet. 16 home games, 16 road games so far have been played. Well, Buenos down on strikes. Two outs, and it's Evan Gaddis who's had a couple of days off. He did not play Sunday, and yesterday was a scheduled day off. And had himself a pretty good homestand last time he was in this uniform. He sure did. 
Gattis did pinch hit on Sunday and popped up with the bases loaded in the seventh inning. And the Astros three to one loss to the Angels. Now at 183, he has belted six homers and driven in 18 runs. This one way outside and Posey couldn't keep it close, so that's a wild pitch getting Marisnik into scoring position. Early on, getting a read on Heston seems to kind of have that whippy arm coming through, kind of slings it in there a little bit. But an interesting slider. When he misses, he misses bad early on here True. so far. We've seen him with a couple of those. That puts a pressure on an MVP catcher like Posey. You mentioned that last home stand for Gaddis. He hit four homers, drove in 11 runs. Looks at that first strike, and it's a one ball, one strike count. So he airmails the pitch before and comes back and paints the outside corner with the next. Now you're wondering at the play exactly, <laughs> exactly. what you're going to be getting next. Heston went to East Carolina after attending Seminole Community College. He's from Palm Bay, Florida. 12th round pick in 09 of the Giants. Broken bat roller to third. Here's Duffy with the play. No runs a hit and the man left. No score after one. Fiery figure still had the high pants. Hit after it, had all the tools when he got called up. I had the pleasure of being his teammate for a while. He was a fun guy to play around. He always had that high energy. That motor was running, running constantly and was easily one of the more aggressive guys in the batting cage. If he didn't get a hit, he was back up in, underneath in the tunnel taking hacks off the machine. So a lot of fun playing with Hunter and obviously a successful ball player having played here and moving on to San Francisco. He has been a very important guy in that Giants uniform. You would think maybe that he would have worn himself out with all that work that he did, but he didn't. He had inexhaustible energy. Brandon Belt, the batter. Yeah, fun guy to be around. There's ball one. Belt at 306 has no homers, seven runs batted in, so he has not gone deep. Pagan has not gone deep. And yet they're maintaining their averages. In tight to Belt. It's a two ball, no strike count. Scroggins is cool. Yeah, Scroggins Elementary. Fly ball left field. Robbie Grossman breaks in, but can't get there. And it's a looping single the other way, similar to Pagan's hit in the first inning. bit different three four five than the Houston Astros are working with a couple of guys in the three hole five hole that don't have home runs but get on base quite a bit so it's a matter of picking your poison almost the Astros going with the high strikeout high home run types San Francisco going with guys to get on base interesting point 
Justin Maxwell comes up. Another great guy who played for the Astros. 241, three homers. He's driven in 14. He's really filled a need for the Giants. Strike one of men with enormous gifts. Well, this guy can hit a ball that won't stop for a while. And very good athleticism in the outfield as well. Great personality, too. One of the guys that, on the Astros that I enjoyed having a conversation with every once in a while. It was always personable. That one gets to Altuve's left. He was overshifted and doesn't have a play on it. It's a lazy bouncing ball between first and second, but Altuve was up the middle, and Maxwell reaches on the slow bounding infield hit. And we see the shifts because of the high probability of getting that out with those guys in the position they're at. But there's really nothing you can do to defend something like this off of Maxwell's bat. Great pitch by McHugh. He just happens to nub it that way where nobody is. Well, the Giants have something working, and it's Crawford coming up, even though none of their hits has been struck very well. Crawford at 253. Has put it all together. He had been known as a great defensive shortstop, but he's also hit five homers, 16 runs batted in for Crawford. Crawford takes and it's ball one. Giants as a team are hitting just 223 with runners in scoring position. Decent RBI guys down at the bottom third of this order. True. Crawford with a big cut takes it to a 1 1 count. Crawford hit 10 homers and drove in 69 last year. And with their ballpark being so spacious, the line drive approach works very well there. Home runs tough to come by at ATT Park. It's amazing you can say that about a ballpark that's 309 down the right field line. <laughs> But it's so true. <laughs> Wanted to affect their whole division, Blummer. Yeah. Uh, has big ballparks. I think you could say that about the American League West also. Uh, it, granted, the ball flies in Texas a little bit. I mean, it made a smaller park, but all those other ballparks out on the West Coast are pretty spacious themselves. Yeah. Tremendous track record for Bruce Bochy. Tenth player to manage three World Series champs. Oh, and hit him. And the bases are loaded with nobody out for Duffy now. Curveball got away from McHugh. There's two strikes in the count. And now it's belt to third, Maxwell to second. Really nothing you can do as a hitter when you see that breaking ball come in. You anticipate the break. But if anything, you might have hit him in a good spot to slow him down, maybe a step or two. Right behind the right knee, or right below it, maybe. Now it's Duffy. Astros also have a player named Matt Duffy in the minor leagues. Different guy here, this Matt Duffy, 24 years old from Long Beach, California. Had a little time with the Giants last year, 60 at bats. And he shoots one deep to left center field, and that will drop in the game. It'll kick up high. Maris it back to chase it down. Two runners come home, and now a third coming to the plate. Go from Marlon Gonzalez, not in time. Three run double for Duffy. And a 3 0 giant lead. It's 13 runs batted in now for Duffy. A couple of base hits hit by Fitch. Obviously, didn't fall. Brandon Crawford's, Crawford's wheels at all being able to score on that deep drive to left center field, but aggressive hitting. You see, he didn't miss a spot. Castro set up on that inside corner. Scouting report said you could get him in there, but Duffy does a good job of dropping the head, driving it in that gap. Plenty of time to score those three runners. And that brings up Gregor Blanco. Four straight Giants have reached. Babuena in on the grass at third base for Blanco. Blanco takes strike one. Chad Fairchild is the home plate umpire tonight. Blanco at 230 has one RBI. Five doubles and a triple, though. He's a very good defensive player. And Astros fans probably remember him from Matt Kane's perfect game. No balls, two strikes. 
He made the best play in that game on a ball hit by Jordan Schaefer in the seventh inning. It was June 13, 2012, with the Astros there in San Francisco, and that one really helped Kane to the perfecto that night. Fantastic diving catch out in right center field. There's a guy that doesn't get talked about not being in this mix for Good the San point. Francisco Giants. It's a big arm. One and two. Matt had bone chip surgery. And we understand this spring was throwing the ball great. He could get full extension for the first time in years without those bone chips in the elbow, but then came up with a tendon problem and they had to shut him down. First base and foul. Still a one ball, two strike count. The Giants only have 20 home runs as a team. Boy, that is a low number for 32 games. It's amazing. Well, they are chasing the Dodgers and the Padres right now. I think they'd be pretty happy to say they're playing 500 ball. After this road trip, they go home to play the Dodgers. And they swept the Dodgers earlier this season in one of their two series when they were at their low point. There was a feeling that their rivalry with the Dodgers just picked up their players and they played some of their best baseball early in the season. This one will be interesting to see on the Astros. 10 years from now, who is their true rival? You know, <laughs> the Rangers' rivalry is is one that comes with a trophy, but it hasn't been one of those uh, long-standing rivalries of decades and decades with a lot of different developments down through the years. Yeah, and I think that that latter part you just said, the developments, there hasn't really that uh, that that vigorous competition between. There's no vile feelings towards each other. Mm -hmm. It's just another series. It feels like. Hugh goes to third. He checked his swing. Although when I was with San Diego, you know the natural rival for them, right? Yeah. Seattle Mariners. What? They tried to play that one off, <laughs> but it didn't go so well. But I'm sure if you ask every Padre fan, they'd say it was a Dodger Padre yeah. rivalry. Sure, that's ball four. Yeah. Blanco apparently didn't realize it, but it was ball four. And that's the third walk of the night for McHugh. So Colin really struggling here, and Brent Strom's going to try to come out. Break the ice a little bit, try to get him back on track with Aoki coming up next. We talked about the Giants being aggressive hitters, and they're aggressive in the zone. Paul McHugh, a high strike thrower, so they're getting hits on those strikes, putting him in a hole a little bit with base runners on. Then he falls behind. Now he's creating all kinds of issues for himself. But they don't. They don't chase. Right. Even though they're aggressive, what I mean, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is they're aggressive in the zone, but they don't chase out of the zone. Right. And so now, you know, and, and this is the difficult thing about pitching, as you know, and there's nobody to help you out there. You've got to figure this out on your own here. You know what's happening, but the wheels have to be grinding pretty quickly to make the correction. And as a pitcher, you're really just hoping that you make a good pitch, and even if they hit it on a line, you hope they hit it right at somebody. Holland gave up four runs in seven innings when he beat Seattle here May 2nd. That's the most runs he's given up in a game. And he throws strike one there on I.O. He has set a terrific pattern though last year in this with the Astros. It's hard to sustain what he's been doing with the 11 game winning streak. Now one ball one strike count. Red Overholzer returns to the Astros rotation tomorrow night. It's taken him a while to get that skin on his finger healed and get his arm strength built back but he's feeling good again and he'll oppose Tim Hudson tomorrow night. 710 start time. 630 pregame show time. In tight. I hope he was able to check his swing. Pitch. Oh, 
almost got Aoki to offer at it. That's a better pitch than I even thought it was. Yeah. In the air. Marlon Gonzalez. Infield fly. And finally for Colin. Out number one comes. Ground ball away from getting out of this thing. Trying to limit the damage. Panic struck out as a part of a double play with a caught stealing on Aoki in the first inning. The Giants for the season have averaged 3.16 runs per game. So you would expect them to get a lift when Hunter Pence returns. Ball one to Panic. Big lift. Add some more depth to that bench. Add some more depth to that lineup, push some guys down a little bit, put guys back in their correct spots. Not to mention what the joy it is to have Hunter around in that clubhouse. That guy's never a dull moment. No. With his pep talks. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. Did you see that when he was a young player here? Did you see him turning into that somewhere down the line? Um. Maybe I know that he, he was <laughs> he was such an excitable young guy in the clubhouse that we had to pull it pull it back a little bit. But uh, he was just so entertaining. Everything he said, everything he did was based around the game. It was just a great energy he had. A shallow left field for Grossman. Two outs. Join the Astros this Saturday for our eighth annual Bayou Bash presented by AGB. The bash is open from 3 to 6 p.m. on the Crawford Street Plaza and features live music from Low Cash and tons of crawfish, cold beer, and activities for all ages. To purchase tickets, visit astros.com slash Bayou Bash or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. It's finally here on Saturday. We had some visitors from LSU here tonight. Angel Pagan is the batter. He singled the left field in the first inning. And the head coach of the football team, Les Miles, is in town. The athletic director is here. We met some others with the LSU traveling party. Fly ball out to center field. Marisnik waiting. And in the second, the Giants hang a three spot on Colin McHugh, coming up with three hits, leaving a couple to lead it 3 0. Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. Giants infield is shifting around as the Astros come up in the last of the second inning because full hitting Colby Rasmus is leading it off. So Crawford's way over on the first base side of second. And the 
off speed pitch dips low and in ball one to Rasmus. 239 for Colby. Six homers, 12 runs batted in. He has a 5'11 slugging percentage. He has hit some really high home runs. He does have some power, doesn't he? Sure does. He's got a lot of moving parts. That leg kick, his hands that hanging out over the plate. He's way up in the box. Kind of a material type of guy, but if you hang something out over the plate, he will pummel it. On a breaking pitch, it's one and two. Well, what would be, do you think, his reason for being way up in the box? Likes a fastball. He wants to create everything. When you hit a good fastball, you move up the box to take away the change up and the slide. You try and hit those pitches before they break. Crack out for Heston. Yellowwood and Chris Carter are bringing the lumber. Chris with the home run every 15.76 at bats in his Astros career, which is currently the best ratio in franchise history. Trying to get this young man going because we know when he gets that lumber going through the zone, he has a tendency to drive him way out of the ballpark. And right now would be a really good time to do it as you look at some other Astros on that list. He's number one. Fewest at bats per home run. Plays off the slider, ball one. It's an interesting number because those are some guys on there that could bash the baseball. One ball, one strike as Heston moves the location of his breaking pitch. Duly noted on that scorecard. Now three breaking balls, and it's a one ball, two strike count to Carter. Foul back well, for Chris, who, similar to last year, is off to that kind of a start that would not tell you he's going to wind up with 37 homers. He has five, he's driven in 12 with a 151 average. He wound up hitting 227 last year, 37 homers, 88 runs batted in. The man will test your patience. He knows it, but if he gets it going, he carried him for a couple months last year, yeah. hitting all those home runs. Foul back. But now here's this dilemma. You have this power hitter who has delivered, so it's not an expectation of something that's never happened before. He was a slow starter last year. Same thing again this year. Fly ball out to center field. Pagan moving over. For out number two. Well, maybe next time he comes up, we can go further into that, but. How do you handle it? That's the real question we want to. That is a real question. And like you said, luckily he has that track record that's going to keep him here. Some might say that the contract is keeping him here, but I think it's that potential of hitting 37 to 40 home runs and driving in. He might have an opportunity if he has a similar year as last year with the 37 home runs to drive in more runs because the guy in front of him, guys in front of him are hitting the ball so well. Mm -hmm. Jason Castro at 220. Takes that pitch up for ball one. Castro has two homers, five runs batted in. He has certainly hit several balls hard this year that have been caught. He had the only Astros hit on Sunday in the three to one loss, a single in the seventh inning. Off Garrett Richards, who was fantastic with ten strikeouts and six and two thirds. Two balls, one strike. They play him straight away. Marlon Gonzalez is on deck. I think Castro is one of those guys you do have to play straight up. You mentioned how he goes the other way so well, but if you make a mistake, he still has the ability to break it down that right field line. This is high to right field. Maxwell back. Castro has hit it over Maxwell. Home run, Castro, number three. Three to one, Giants. And the league leading Astros get their 46th long ball in their 33rd game. Randy, I love it when guys start listening to me. <laughs> Make me sound good. Yeah, they did. Made a mistake right here. Heston did. Looked like a changeup down in the zone. 
But when you're looking to drive the fastball the other way, it allows you the chance to stay on these off-speed pitches like Castro just did right there. Jack that ball out of the ballpark. That's an excellent point. Maxwell couldn't catch it, neither could number 48. Marwin Gonzalez to left field. Blanco in. And the Astros tally a single run. Castro goes deep for his sixth run batted in. It's three to one. Giants. Awareness Day here at the ballpark. 250 people were on the field to create a human breast cancer ribbon. It was really cool. <laughs> There's a lot of people on there. I'm joined by Dr. Angel Rodriguez of Houston Methodist Cancer Center. He's a breast medical oncologist, and you spoke at the panel today. I want to ask you what are some ways to prevent, maybe detect breast cancer? Of course, the most important thing is early detection. And what we recommend is uh, every woman starting at the age of 40 every year to have a mammogram done, have a clinical breast exam by a doctor also every year. And if you have any uh, suspicion that you might be at risk, for example, family history, please ask your doctor. What are some misconceptions that people may have? Sure. So one of the misconceptions is that uh, if I don't have a family history, if nobody in my family had breast cancer, then I'm never going to get breast cancer. And unfortunately, 85% of all breast cancer, patients with breast cancer, don't have any family history. So it can happen to anybody. And you probably know a friend uh, who may have uh, breast cancer. And uh, do it. don't be afraid of having breast cancer. Do it because of them. Do it so that you can be detected early. Thank you so much for the tips there. One in eight women in the U.S. will develop some form of breast cancer. Scary stuff, but definitely we need to all be knowledgeable. Thank you, and you're a progressive fan of the game as well. Thank you threw out the first pitch, did a great job. You've got your daughters with you. you. Enjoy the game, Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, back Thanks, to you. Julia, you were involved in some of those panels before the game. Thanks for your work on that. Fouled out of play by Brandon Belt. Belt is the only first baseman in the National League without a homer this season. He has at least 50 at-bats. Field shifted around on him. Posey went for the first pitch and grounded out to third. McHugh facing the Giants for the first time in his career. They were one of six teams he had not faced coming into this game tonight. Since he joined the Astros rotation, Colin is 15 and 9 with a 2.83 ERA and 31 starts. So that's just about a full season's work for a pitcher. That would be an excellent season. Check swing call goes the Giants' way, and it's two and one on the Marvin Hudson check swing call. Those are real nice numbers on a season. Get three guys with that record, you're going to be winning some ball games, through. The Astros starters are third in innings pitched in the American League, 195 innings coming into this game. 
shift his arm, and here's a backhand play by Carter. It took it right away from Altuve. Barely got the out at first with McHugh covering. That play took a while to unfold. And Altuve <laughs> checking with Carter right now. He was standing right behind him. It was a much more difficult play for Carter, who had to backhand it. Well, again, Carter, I think, is still learning how to play first base. And part of uh, some of these defensive shifts that the Astros are going to put on is, ooh, you got to recognize where everybody's positioned at. Close, wasn't it? That's extremely close. And I look down there, and Bochy's on that top step, and it looks like he's headed back down. But wow, it looks like it was barely in time to get it. Um, but getting back to first base because that was yeah. a lot closer than I thought it would be. Um, you got to recognize when you're playing in those shifts where those guys are playing in relation to where you are. Carter can range to his right. You see him, him make some good plays going to his right, but Altuve standing right behind him is obviously the easier play. Justin Maxwell takes strike one, reached on the infield hit. Yeah, you know you don't want to discourage Carter from breaking to his right for balls, but the awareness has to be there, as you said, on where Altuve is playing, and now the pitcher has to come over and cover if the first baseman fields it, which makes it a tougher play. But Nonetheless, it's a quick third inning for Colin McHugh. Three ground ball outs, three to one Giants. Day. He had so many sayings. Here's one uh, that many of you like. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Well, some further reading has developed that, that this was really a true statement because Yogi was giving somebody directions to his house in New Jersey. And apparently, the road that came into this subdivision forked. It split and it went into a circle. And he lived on that circle. So, so, funny. so either way you took the fork, would lead you to Yogi's house. He knew exactly what he was talking about. Yes, he did. Robbie Grossman, slow bounding ball out to panic. And an underhand toss. Took a little while for that to get there. Out number one. Hey, Yogi's turning 90 today. Oh, one of my favorites, Tony Hawk. Birthday today. You're going to break out that Burt Bacharach CD, aren't you? Absolutely, pal. Get that thing going. And maybe some, well, you've heard the uh, George Carlin routine oh, on yeah. baseball or the football. That was yep. classic. He was good. Yep. Jake Marisnik bats now. He's single to center. Well, we're trying to get an update on tonight's George Springer rehab game with Double A Corpus Christi. They're in San Antonio tonight. And the Astros hope that George will be here in the lineup tomorrow night if things go well. One ball, one strike. If he walks out of that ballpark, I think he'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> so that is your standard for passing the test. Then. Yes. That will be plenty for me to see him back in an Astros uni. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. 
Astros have 16 of their next 23 games right here at Minute Maid Park. Five game lead in the AL West on the Angels. Oh, and almost clipped him. Three balls and a strike. If they can keep this game close, they have a chance to get to Chris Heston. I agree. He hasn't been real effective with that slider as this one backs up and almost gets a piece of Marisnik. But if that slider's not getting over, you're forcing him to throw more fastballs. And at 89 miles an hour, I expect the Astros to get on it. Gee, that was a strike, huh? I guess so. And that was a ball. No! Another one. All right. I got number three. Seems like the same pitch. I wonder if the Astros are having a tough time picking the ball up out of Heston's hand. But this is a runner right back in that same spot. But again, I don't think he's meaning to because you can see where Buster Posey set up on that outside corner. Right. I thought the movement of the mitt would cost them a call on that. Well, young pitchers usually don't get the benefit of the doubt. Good point. Altuve the batter. That's ball one. Jose hit a fly ball to right field in the first inning. Haston, who was up briefly at the end of last year, started this year 2 and 1 with a 0 0.87 ERA, his first three starts. In his last three starts, he's 0 2 with a 6.48. That's fought off by Altuve, two balls in a strike. You told us about his last start. He lost to San Diego Wednesday, gave up 11 hits and five runs in five innings. But nonetheless, the Giants, I presume, are happy with his 3.3 ADRA through the first six. Just buying some time until the injured pitchers can come back. Both Jake Peavy and Matt Kane yeah. are hurt from their rotation now. Two main cogs in that rotation. How about Tim Lincecum? He's been very good for them. Reinventing himself. Yes. Madison Bumgarner, of course, one of the best in baseball. Two balls, two strikes. And the giant bullpen is solid this year. Bruce Bochy does a great job of handling those guys. Doesn't really ever burn any one of those guys out too much. Gives them quality days off, keeps them fresh. This ball three and it's a full count on Altuve. And pitching coach Dave Rigetti has been with Bruce for many years with the Giants. It's a solid coaching staff, but sorry to see that Tim Flannery retired as a coach this year. I understand he's doing some pre and post game shows. For the Giants. Springer 0 for 2 with two strikeouts tonight, Jeff. And Altuve punches out. That's number four for Heston. And he takes a 3 to 1 lead to the fourth.
catching the Astros game. Les Miles, the head football coach for LSU. This is your 11th season. What, what, what brings you to town? Uh, we had an alumni function. We uh, kind of enjoyed some of the loyal, faithful to LSU right here in Houston. And then we kind of drug our feet until the game started so we could come and watch. Well, we enjoy having you. I'm sure you're thinking about who's going to be your starting quarterback as you sit here, right? That's what you're doing. Not this moment, oh, okay. no. I really <laughs> want the Astros to come from behind. But uh, but we will uh, we will have a better quarterback. Uh, both quarterbacks really improved coming off the spring. You know, coming off last spring, it's, it's vastly different. And uh, we think we'll have a very quality quarterback when they, we take the field. And we'll let competition decide who. How does the team look this year? I think we're going to be a good football team. I, I think these these guys have to have a great summer, and there's some work certainly left in front of us. But uh, they have great leadership, they have a good quality group, and I think the team has a chance to be special. A football guy, but you have to appreciate this sport. What what about baseball? Do you like what aspect of this game? I'm an old catcher. I love the sport. I mean, I, I I promise you, I'm calling pitches. I'm talking about the umpire's view of the home plate. I. Uh, I, I no, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, I love it. That's good. And you've got a great seat where you can, you can yeah, probably really. Obviously, somebody who's taking care of the head coach from LSU because this seat is special. It's, it's just like being a catcher. You're right behind that's the, the it's, that's, that's one of the real things that for a catcher you get, right? You know, you, you get to watch the, the pitches that are being called. Like, for instance, right now, um, the pitcher from the Astros, had, I mean, his fastball is 85. His curve is 71. I mean, and yet he's really just as of late started handling, you know, their batters. And I'm kind of enjoying the, what's going on now. The, the, the home plate umpire hasn't called an outside strike yet. So the pitcher's got to understand there's some places he can throw and some places he can't. This is great stuff. Your, your teams always have great defenses. What do you think about all the shifting in this game? Well, I think the shift is really right. I, I think, I think. You have to study where that ball's going down, and you got to, and you know the guy that's coming up. I think it takes, I think it's a percentage of baseball that you have to take. You have to, if they're going to hit it there, we're going to be standing there. And you also like grass. Do people still ask you about grass? Well, you yeah. have to like this grass if you it's like grass. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, I have to be honest with you, I haven't gotten to it, nor have I tasted it. Thank you so much for the time. Great talking to you. Les Miles, <laughs> that's up to you. He's a fun guy. One ball, two strikes to Duffy after the ground out by Crawford. And he's paying attention down there, Blummer. Man, you ain't lying. He could take my job in a heartbeat. <laughs> Would you want his job? No. Too much stress. I like it up here. You mean you wouldn't want to go into living rooms of 18 year olds and convince <laughs> them to attend LSU? Two and two. I don't know if I'm that good a salesman. Well, that's a tough part of that job, isn't it? All the travel visits they have to make to homes. There's really no off season in football these days. That's a foul tip strikeout, and Colin McHugh has figured it out, it would appear. That's his second strikeout of the night. It would be good if Colin started to figure out a little bit. Some of these pitches he's been throwing recently have been down in the zone, but. Got good depth on that breaking ball right there. That's a good view of that downward plane he created with that pitch. Gregor Blanco walked in the second. They're looking back at that second inning when they got the three runs. There was a little looping hit to left by Bell. An infield roller by Maxwell. Then the walk to Crawford. And the only ball that's been well hit off him. All night is the three run double to left center by Duffy. And ball one strike. Her ball. One and two. Trail two to nothing when he came out of that last start at Anaheim. The Astros turned that game around and won it with a three run ninth, three to two. He got a no decision. Two and two the count. 
to this two game set the Toronto Blue Jays visit for four. And then that's followed by the Oakland A's. They have really fallen on hard times. Three balls two strikes. I don't hear too many Astro fans or players concerned about that. No you're not. Especially after what the A's have done to the Astros in the last couple of years. Good point. Tuve goes over, but Carter's there for this one. On to McHugh for on number three. That is nine in a row retired by McHugh to keep it close at three to one San Francisco. Young man putting up massive numbers. I'm not sure when he's going to stop improving. This kid's got talent galore, and he keeps putting up ridiculous numbers wherever he was at. Corpus Christi did himself a great job, earned that promotion to Fresno to become a Grizzly. <laughs> Those numbers pretty much say it all, don't they? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is outrageous, Blummer. He's already got 15 bags. Yeah, that surprised me, too. I don't think he was caught stealing either. Well, that's what you know you overlook that because all the other numbers are so great, but the kid can run. Yes, he can. Luis Valbuena takes ball one. He struck out in the first inning, so Correa has been on that fast track. And a line shot caught by Bell. One out. Good swing by Luis. Tough luck. A bad case of Adamitis. Slow down such a quick swing. See how he throws that barrel at the baseball and turns on it. Strike one. Evan Gaddis grounded to third earlier on a broken bat in the first inning. Heston had to reinvent himself. There's ball one. He started out uh, his career in 09 after being a 12th round draft choice. Not have a very good year in 2013 for Fresno. Fly ball out of the way. He was designated for assignment in July of 2013 and released by the Giants. He cleared waivers and re signed a minor league contract. The Giants uh, needed to make room for Jeff Frank for the outfielder and made it back to the major leagues after all that. His GPS was broken. It's a tough route. Yes, it is. Get there as long as you get there. But a lot of people do say it's easier to get there than it is to stay there. Wide of third base. 
Astros had a little fielding workout before the game tonight. And after the day off yesterday, most of the players were here early for this one. What time did you guys get back in town Sunday night? At around 11:30 wasn't too bad. Out the shortstop, Crawford. Two down. Astros baseball offers incredible savings such as all you can eat seats at Minute Maid Park. This incredible deal offers endless savings and scores you a ticket at unlimited and unlimited ballpark favorites starting at only $35. For more information, visit Astros.com slash value or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Colby Rasmus struck out in the second inning. Ball one to Colby. Big Auburn fan. Ian Les Miles see things differently right now. Be a good conversation. <laughs> well, the SEC is such a passionate fan base, isn't it? Sure is. That'd be one of those bucket list things to go down and watch a football game down at LSU. Just to drink it all in. It's quite a spectacle. Rasmus takes a look at it. It's two and one. Colby's a 299 career hitter against Giant pitching from his days with the Cardinals. With three homers, 11 runs batted in against San Francisco. Two and two, and Heston is settling in now. He survived the two out solo homer by Castro in the second inning. And he's allowed just two hits through three and two thirds. There and Rasmus is a strikeout victim thrown out by Posey. That's number five for Heston, three to one Giants. Dealers, call him the Q versus Brandon Crawford. Got away with one right there, a hanging cutter fouled off, but does a good job of coming back, painting that outside corner. Didn't get him to chase on that breaking ball through a better one on the outside corner. That usually leads to a rollover or a strikeout for Colin McHugh. Now, as he trails three to one, he's ready for the fifth inning and the leadoff man, Aoki, who's walked and popped to short. Slash to second, now two back. You know, some second basemen will just not allow themselves to ever go down on a knee, but I like that. Make sure. If you've got the time at second base, that ball was smoked. Off Ioki's bat. Why not get down there? You're at second base, nice easy throw. You got plenty of time because the ball's hit so hard. It makes every bit of sense in the world. It's all about making the play. Panic is 0 for 2. Very 
Dodgers strike one. Well, with the transaction with uh, Luke Gregerson coming back from that uh, family emergency medical leave tonight, a player had to be sent out. Asher Wojciechowski was that player. No balls, two strikes, and Brett Oberholzer comes back tomorrow night. Springer. Springer comes back potentially tomorrow night. So some other moves are in the offing. We don't know what they are. The shot fair up the left field line. It kicks out. And Grossman has to pursue it and will hold him to a single. Well played by Robbie. Panic is aboard, and that adds to his hitting streak, takes it to nine games. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I think Panic got away with one, sneaking it in that third baseline. It's a pretty good pitch. You see kind of that delayed swing. Mm -hmm. Just keeps his nose on it. Take those. He has good numbers. He does let the ball travel, doesn't he? Good attribute to have as a hitter. Confidence in those hands. Pagan bats next. He is one for two. Ball one to Pagan. Giants have had their stumbles along the way this season. They were in last place at the end of April. They were swept at home by Colorado and they scored three runs in a three game series. They bounce right back. They've swept the Dodgers and they've swept the Angels. Two balls, no strikes. Chris Bochy is the tenth man to manage three World Series champions. The other nine are in the Hall of Fame. So you're saying there's a chance. There's a very good chance. And I think that's good to see for Bruce Bochy. His teams have won 10 straight postseason series. <laughs> Two and one. He's the number one active manager on the win list. 1,618 coming into this season. He's placed himself in that Hall of Fame category. Rightfully so. He'd get my vote in a heartbeat. Good man, good manager. Side for a ball. Three balls and a strike. And the general manager Brian Sabian has been a very good teammate, so to speak, of Bruce Bochy. It's Sabian's 19th year as a general manager. He's the dean of Major League General Managers. He's had seven playoff teams. And he and Bochy were together in San Diego as well. Right field for a hit. Charged by Rasmus. And the Giants have a Pagan single to give him a two for three night. Advancing panic with one out. Buster Posey comes up. Castro out to talk. Posey's 0 for 2. And this could be, you never know, but it could be the critical point of this game with the Giants up by a couple. And their cleanup man. And McHugh has surrendered those three hits in the second and three runs. If he can get through this little obstacle, gives the Astros a chance to come back. Yeah, I'm with you on that. This is a big one right here. This A B against Posey. You can keep that two run lead. You're definitely keeping the door open for the Astros offense to come back. Strike one. When you're on the field playing a game like this, is that what you're thinking? Oh man, yeah. this is the critical point in this game right here. Yeah, you can definitely feel it. You know how your pitcher's going up to this point. You've already played four innings, but you have an idea that Colin McHugh maybe doesn't have his best command on the day. And with one out, arguably the Giants' best hitter up, you know this is the time. If you're going to make a play, you make it now. I lost two strikes. If you were in an outfielder, depending on the situation, or you may be thinking, hey, hey, if I have to dive for a ball here, this is the time to go for it. Yeah, you better be darn sure to go out there and uh, knock it down and keep it in front of you, uh, in front of you if you can. But yeah, as good as Colin McHugh's been going, 
you know that every guy behind him wants to make that play and wants him to continue that that success because you want to go out there and play hard for these guys and have streaks like he's got going right now. Collins, 27 years old, he's from Covington, Georgia. Astros claimed him on waivers. December of 2013. What a great claim. Now 2 2 to Posey. Yeah, if you told uh, anybody that you were going to make a claim and the guy was going to go 15 and 9 over the course of a full season, <laughs> let's do it now. Absolutely. Are there any more like him? <laughs> This is there and it's a full count now. Three two to Posey. Roberto Kelly is coaching third now for the Giants. You've got to be impressed with how Collins kept his cool out there too, showing a lot of poise. During this stretch where he's pitched so well, he hasn't pitched immaculate games. He's had to battle out of some situations. Runner goes to third. There's a shot off that Brennan's club. And no play. Panic broke for third base. Pagan was not breaking for second. And the ball was on Valbuena in a hurry and he failed to come up with it. Well, you called it the runners were in motion. Therefore, at third base, Valbuena was charging in to cover third base. And that's what kind of created that tough hop for him. Ball was hit and you see the feet moving. And he's going to stop and react to the ball as it's hit. It's a real tough play for a third baseman. But I've also seen situations where the third baseman will hold his ground with a big right handed hitter up there at a 3 2 count where you know the runners are going to be moving just so he can defend the ground ball and make sure he gets it out. It was ruled an error on Babuena, only his second of the year. Belt taking ball one. Well, we talked about a turning point, and it might wind up being that play. Could be. Now, golden opportunity for Bell. The base is loaded, one down. He's one for two. Kevin Chapman warming up for Houston. In for a strike. One and one. And as a third baseman, you want to hold your ground as long as you can, but you don't want to be late getting to the bag in case that ball does get to the catcher and he has to make a throw. Because if there's nobody down there, it could. Lead to a worse situation. It's a little different than playing second in that regard, isn't it? Because if you're the second baseman and you have to cover with a runner going, don't you try to buy a little time by maybe coming in before you break over to second? Yep. That's what they say. If you're playing second base, you come in towards the hitter and then break to the right. It's all about angles on defense. And obviously at second base, you've got a little more depth on the infield to work with to create those angles. Now 3-1 to Bell. And McHugh has great demeanor when he's in trouble, doesn't he? He does. He's not getting some calls, I think. Might be frustrating him a little bit. He's trying to work out of this thing, but just not getting any help on the edges. Big 3 1 coming here. And big cut. 3 2. What's that little cutter? And even the cue, we talked about him pitching up in the zone, but even that late cut up in the zone gets a big swing and cuts under it from Belt. That's kind of what you could do with the bases loaded. That's true. Now we'll see what he does on the 3 2. For the same pitch, and why not after the previous swing? Two outs. That might, might be the weakness to go attack Brandon Belt at. He starts with his hands high, but you can see he drops him when he loads, and it's tough for him to get that barrel back up there. And even at 86, 87 miles an hour, as a hitter, you see a fastball up, start your swing, and then that last little cut doesn't allow you to get the barrel on it. Good pitch. 
Justin Maxwell, it's one for two. Better job of repeating the same pitch, which isn't easy all the time. 85 pitches for McHugh. All one to J Max. Chapman warming up. Not so sure if McHugh doesn't get Maxwell here that he stays in the game because he's had some stressful innings tonight. He's closing in on 90. Shortest outing of the season has been five and two thirds. One one. Maxwell's father is a Giants fan, Willie Mays fan, so Justin grew up a Giants fan as well. He was drafted by Washington in 05, then he was a Yankee. The Astros claimed him on waivers in 2012, traded him to Kansas City. Well, he's up in the count two and one. And he really is up against it pitching in these hitters counts this season. Got the swing and miss on a cutter before this. He went out to that same spot. You've got to give credit to Justin Maxwell for laying off that pitch a second time. True. Wow. Dallas Keuchel looking for McHugh. And he gets a swing. Two and two, and you talked about it earlier about the, the lack of calls. And you feel like if you're pitching, you've got to get the hitter to swing the bat because you're not getting those marginal calls. So that really uh, forces a pitcher to get inventive sometimes. Big time. Test yourself a little bit, and that's what Colin McHugh has done this evening. Big two-two pitch coming in. And this crowd will love it if he can get Maxwell. Ground ball goes Lannister. Good pitch, doing a great job of keeping that ball down against a big hitter like Maxwell. Maxwell, after playing for Kansas City last year, just 40 at bats, was at Triple A most of the season. Just a little bit out front. And the Giants signed him as a free agent last November. He hit 18 homers for the Astros in 2012 and 315 in bats. Maxwell with a shot to the left side, flying down. Here's Marlin, jump throw. Altuve failed to make the catch. A run scores. Here's another runner coming to the plate. And now it's 5 to 1 Giants. That was a one hop throw from Gonzalez to Altuve. And the Giants capitalize and score two. Great. Great play by Marlon to get to this ball. And I think as soon as he started that jump turn to make the throw to second base, he's got tangled up in the web of his glove a little bit. See if we can see it on this replay. Watch as he jumps. He just didn't have a grab on that or grip on that ball. Long hopped it. Altuve did the best he could. I think if he would have caught that ball, he would have but suppose he would have been out at second base. Yep. It looks like it. Panic scored. Pagan came home to make it 5 to 1 Giants. AJ Hinch will change pitchers. We'll be right back.
p.m. The number one live streaming sports service is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out-of-market game live or on demand and True HD on over 400 devices. Get real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit Penelope.tv for details, guys. Julia, how did your seminars go before the game tonight? Oh, that was great stuff. Tell we had two about. different panels and, and a great turnout for it. I think they uh, got a lot of info from those. Good times. Very good. That last play was ruled a fielder's choice and an error on Altuve. Kevin Chapman comes in. In two games, he has no wins or losses, a 2.25 ERA. Really helped the club in that game here against Texas a week ago, going three innings in relief. Giving up one run. And now he comes in with runners at first and second. And the hitter is Brandon Crawford. Crawford is 0 for 1 with a walk. So Maxwell should have been credited with an RBI. The first run to score on that last play, on which two runs came home. It was oh so close. Yeah, as we can see, and you explain, ball got caught in the glove there of Marwin that affected the throw. There's a shot out to right center field. This would be a gapper. And it bounces high and goes out of play. That's a double for Crawford. Driving in Posey. Maxwell will go back to third, and it's six to one. Crawford gets a 17th run batted in. That's his fifth double of the year. Get that left on left matchup. Sometimes these left handed hitters. When they face that guy coming in the bullpen, more often than not, they come in and try and get that first pitch breaking ball over. And Crawford guessed right, right here. And the Astros are actually saved the run by having that ball bounce into the stands, keeping Maxwell at third base. That's true. Now runners at second and third, two outs from Matt Duffy. Duffy had the three run double in the second inning. He's one for two. Six runs on seven hits for the Giants. Is over out to the into right center field. That'll score Maxwell and now Crawford to make it eight to one. Duffy's driven in five runs tonight. He had ten this season before this game. Verbial floodgates are opening up here. A huge fifth inning, five runs home. Two pitches, three runs have scored. Mm -hmm. Now Blanco's the batter. There's a walk and a ground out. That's ball one. I'm going to try to find that website, Blummer. We were talking about the Yogi Berra quote earlier today. He's 90 years old. There's a a movement underway. Fans can vote for him to be considered for the presidential medal of freedom right now. I need I think they need a hundred thousand votes for him to be considered and they have just started this campaign. And I would think that would be a snap. A lot of baseball fans would be glad to sign up for that. Really have to get the petition going. Well, Shouldn't that just be a given? It should be. Evidently that's the rule. And I think uh, an official or a former official of the current administration is involved, so that'll help things out a little bit. We got to speed that up. Yeah, Yogi, uh, 90 years old today. What a wonderful career! 14 World Series, 10 winning World Series rings. Nobody else has that. In 17 years, you imagine? It's, it's a part of your your yearly plan. We're going to the World Series every year. Well, you could put Buster Posey in that same category early on <laughs> in his career. Yeah. I mean, are you talk about spoiled rotten? <laughs> wow. Of course, Yogi was a former Astros coach. One of the most beloved figures in baseball history. Struck him out looking, and the Giants bat around here in the fifth. Scoring five runs. They put together four hits. There were two errors in the inning, and it's eight to one.
this season. He said, what's big for him this year and at this point of the year wants to have quality at bats. He wants to be more consistent on offense. And sometimes it doesn't, the numbers don't always say how you're feeling at the plate right now. He's feeling pretty good, of course, breaking up the no hit bit on Sunday for Garrett Richards. But as we continue to talk about Castro as Carter steps in there. If you look at him, he's at his numbers there. He's he's trying to go the other way a little bit more, and he is doing so. 28% compared to last year, 20% over to left field, taking it the other way. But another thing he did say today, guys, was that he sometimes feels a little unlucky at times, but he thinks that works out in a way. His strikeout percentage is actually down. Line drive percentage is actually up. Uh, asking him about that, he's like, yeah, that's just the way baseball goes sometimes. They hit it where they ain't. That's not as easy, easily done as you can say it. Well, he has hit balls hard into outs this year. And that's been fairly well documented, hasn't it, Blummer? Yeah, it has. He's got a much better attitude than I would about things. But uh, that line drive rate is also up, too. I think if you saw that graphic. So that tells you that he is actually hitting the ball harder just some bad luck again this season. You know what we could do uh, to try to figure out what's going on is uh, find out what his batting average is on balls in play. If that's yeah. low, and we would suspect it would be lower than average, that will help the equation here. And good point. Just good point. indicate it's tough luck for him. There's a shot by Carter. And Chris with a 2 2 count line that one foul. Now here's the thing you're trailing 8 to 1. It's the fifth inning. The chances of winning are really not very good. But at least if you can get a couple of slumping hitters going in a game like this, it might be helpful for the games to come. And there's some pop in those slumping bats, too, which could actually make it interesting if they did catch fire with a couple guys on base. Excellent point. Castro will be up next. I chopped the third. Duffy with a low throw and Bell is an outstanding glove man. Here's a long ball from Jason. See that swing right there. If it was a fastball, he would have shot it the other way, but because it was a changeup, he's able to get the barrel out there, clip it out in front, launch it. Hopefully that's a sign of things changing for Jason Castro. There's that line drive number we were talking about earlier. I think it's up to around 28%. Oh, yeah. So Big difference. News. All one down and in. Did you ever feel like if you were playing in a game like this, trailing 8 to 1, and you put together four or five more runs, lost, let's say, 8 to 5, 9 to 5, something like that, that and got some slumping hitters started, that it wasn't all that bad? If you were destined to lose, at least you would get something positive out of it. Yeah, that's what you got to do in these situations, knowing you're down by seven runs, with roughly four innings, four and a half innings to go. Get greedy. Try and figure it out. You've got the time. There's no pressure on you right now to hit a seven run home run and tie this thing up. Go up there and have a quality at bat. Hit the ball hard. Try and work out some of the kinks. And if you do come back, great. If you don't, maybe hit a couple balls hard and get some of these guys going, like you said. I think that's a great attitude to have about it. They're leading in the AL West. Things are going really good as far as a team is concerned. So right now, these guys have a chance to get themselves straight. We do have some numbers on Jason. Batting average on balls in play. We'll give you. He just went down a little notch. There's another one of those line drives caught by a leaping Duffy. And of course, that plays right into what we were talking about. Is that he is hitting the ball on the line? He is having good at bats. It's just these guys are making plays against him, or he's hitting it right at him. He was hitting 246 on balls in play coming into this game. That's uh, well under the major league average. Last year it was 294. In 2013 it was 351. All star year. Mm -hmm. Got to have some luck along the way, right? <laughs> Marwin Gonzalez hit a fly ball to left. Carlos Correa struck out in his first at bat at AAA tonight, playing for Fresno in Albuquerque. Strike one to Gonzalez. George Springer is 0 for 3 tonight at San Antonio, playing for Corpus Christi in his rehab game. One and one, so we have action on all fronts in the Astros organization. 
Quad Cities lost this afternoon to snap the 12 game River Bandit winning streak. Nonetheless, their outstanding record is 25 and 7. And Daniel Mingdon has a streak of 21 consecutive scoreless innings. Nice. It's a sharp breaking pitch in the dirt. Marwin chasing it for a strikeout. Number six for Heston and through five. The Giants lead it eight to one. Airlines, book your low fare now at Southwest.com. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at Geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. Giants lead at 8 to 1. Kevin Chapman on the mound in relief of Colin McHugh. Giants batted around in the fifth inning. Now their leadoff man comes up again. Aoki in the sixth. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and fouls that one for strike one. Colin McHugh threw 91 pitches tonight, 55 were strikes. In four and two thirds innings, he allowed six hits, seven runs, three earned, walking three and striking out three. One ball, one strike. The Astros. Before tonight had allowed eight unearned runs in 32 games. They've been doing a pretty good job of making routine plays, protecting the baseball, not allowing innings to blow up on them. They had two errors in the five run fifth inning, so all of the runs, all five of them, were unearned, even though one of the runs will be charged to Kevin Chapman as an earned run for him, but it's an unearned run for the team, and we don't want to have to explain that. Up the middle, Marwin. Good quick release in the dirt, safe at first. He did everything he could do, and Carter picked it. Well, Oki beat the play. AJ Hinch is coming out. And a good time to use a challenge. Well, if you're watching at home, kids, don't try that swing. <laughs> but it proved to be effective right here because he put it in a tough location for Marwin to try and make that play. Let's see if we get a better look at it. Looks like that ball, the glove was moving before the foot hit the bag. I'm with you, Brownie. He's out. Jim Joyce is the crew chief who made that call at first. And this could very well be overturned. Yep. Clearly in the glove. Yep, no doubt. Good challenge. It is a good challenge. You know, because it's. A play with nobody out in the inning, and the, the incidence of a team scoring when placing the leadoff man on in an inning is much, much higher than with one out nobody on. Look at the truth. The casual fan may be saying, "Oh, it's just another play," but that leadoff man of every inning is so important. 
Now it puts the pitcher in the stretch and he's working uh, to panic and Pagan next. So it would be a real benefit to Chapman if this is overturned. Not surprised it's taken the umpire so long to make this call. Pretty clear cut. The call is out. It's got to be weird as an umpire to correct yourself. Yeah. Jim Joyce on the headset has to reverse his own call. Well, you know, the umpires have really handled this process very well. They have as a group. So, as Hawk Harrelson might say, take a hit off the board. Yes, <laughs> Kevin Chapman. <laughs> And it's out number one. So panic is the batter. He's one for three. And it's great to see two of the really popular TV broadcasters around Major League Baseball here in this ballpark again for the first time in three years. Our buddies Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko with the Giants next door. One ball, one strike. Pipe and Crook. There's Dave Fleming over there now. And apparently they've switched booths and Pipe must be doing some radio. Slicing fly ball left field corner and foul. Robbie Grossman was pursuing it. One and two. Dave Fleming also an outstanding young broadcaster. He's been with the Giants for years now. John Miller doesn't do much traveling anymore. It's a good group. Well, as you know, when the Colt 45s came into the league in 1962, the Giants were one of their rivals. That was the case for many years down through the years, you know, Willie Mays and Juan Marichal and all those great Giants players would come to Houston regularly. Talked about that giant sweep of the Dodgers and, <laughs> and the rivalry that they've had. And that has been one of those very intense ones uh, coming back from when. Both teams were in New York. And it was the New York Giants and the Brooklyn Dodgers. How many changes have taken place over the decades since then? Boy. New stadiums, new cities. Three balls, two strikes. And yet it's the Dodgers leading their division right now, the NL West, with a 21 and 10 record. The Dodgers payroll is somewhere around what, $280 million or so? They're getting there. Just going to continue to expand until they win something. <laughs> Panic draws the walk. Join the Astros in Minute Maid Park this Saturday for Whataburger Military Appreciation Night as they take on the Blue Jays. 10,000 fans will receive a Dallas Keuchel Gold Glove Gnome. Presented by HEB. For more information, visit Astros.com or call 1 877 9 Astros. You need one for your wall. Guess what? I got one. Oh, you do. Yeah, I lucked out. That's a beauty. It is good. I like the gold glove, but I'm a little disappointed the beard doesn't bobble. <laughs> you want the beard to bobble? You're a demanding uh, consumer of bobbleheads. Yes. Pagan the batter now. The switch hitter looks at strike one. Pagan is two for three. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think when bobbleheads started that there would be gnomes? No, I did not. Sorry, that's good stuff. No, <laughs> that's terrible. I can't do that. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't realize the gnomes were such a big deal. Let's see what's the distraction behind home plate here. And wow, they are upset about it too. Home plate umpires. There's a light apparently shining out toward the field. Is that it? I think he's pointing at you, Brownie. That's a camera. Or is it? Oh, okay, okay. That gentleman uh, in the scooter had the light on, and that's in the eyes of uh, the players in the field. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Yeah. Throw the flag. Delay a game. <laughs> Altuve saying something into Chapman. Modern day ball players, it's got to be perfect conditions, Brownie. 
You mean you weren't able to field with lights in your eyes? Uh, I was going to let him. If I, if I saw the light on, I was going to leave it on, and then I'd be like, Coach, I lost it in that there one was, light yeah, in all of the stands. I lost it in the scooter light. <laughs> Chapman throws and it's ball two. Got to meet uh, Preston Tucker. I know you met him in Anaheim over the weekend. A delightful young man who played at the University of Florida with Kevin Chapman. And uh, Preston's younger brother is projected as a first round draft choice. We're looking at some projections on MLB.com today by Jonathan Mayo of how that first round might go next month. And it could go with Kyle Tucker going high. Ball back. Pretty good bloodline, then, huh? You bet. And Nolan Fontana is a Triple A for the Astros. He's been playing shortstop there. He's another product of that Florida program. Well, here's the projection for the number one pick in the draft. Arizona, according to Jonathan Mayo of MLB.com, will take Dylan Tate, a right-handed pitcher from Santa Barbara. Houston will take. Brendan Rogers, a high school shortstop from Lake Mary, Florida, with the second pick. And Houston, with the fifth pick, will take right handed pitcher from Vanderbilt, Carson Fulmer. Pagan is down on strikes. Number two for Chapman. And it's Posey coming up next. Actually, sounds like some pretty good selections being made on that list. Yeah. Interestingly, the projection is that Brady Aiken will go to the Dodgers with the 24th overall pick in the first round, even though he's out with Tommy John surgery. Posey's 0 for 3, taking ball one. So that makes the Astros correct in their assumption that there was something in Aiken's arm that was well, incorrect. He threw something like a total of 13 pitches at the IMG Academy before. That ligament ruptured, evidently, according to reports. And now I would assume that it's reasonable to expect that somebody's going to take a flyer on him if he can get back into form after having that surgery done. Exactly. Will Harris is warming up for Houston, which makes it really interesting. And in there's talk about another pitcher who was going to be a first rounder, a college pitcher who has had Tommy John surgery. He may also be going in the first round. So apparently that's not much of a deterrent to these teams who who saw the talent there and figure that the surgery will correct it. Well you've seen a lot of baseball and you've seen a lot of pitchers who have had that Tommy John surgery that's it's becoming the norm and guys actually some guys are actually coming back better. True. That's a four pitch walk to Posey. Well the ligament can certainly be repaired and, and with the. Uh, Method of repair now can come back stronger. In the normal time, a pitcher misses would be a year to 18 months. But still, you know, Dr. James Andrews has published a paper on it because this has been rampant throughout baseball, all these Tommy John surgeries. Unfortunately, many of them to high school age kids and and saying that uh, no, the idea that this will fix all your problems is not going to work. You want to avoid this as much as you can. And some pitchers think that they're going to rush to have this surgery done so they can be fixed and fine for the rest of their careers. That doesn't always work out that way. How can you assume that going under the knife is going to make you better or elongate your career? That's what baffles me. There may be some things that maybe back surgery if you're retired. Right. Or, you know somebody who's a little more laid back, but if you figure the one thing that is making your career that you decide to just cut it open and quote unquote fix it and continue to go out there and bash it, I don't understand that mentality where I'm going to go cut it, supposedly fix it, and continue to use it at max effort on a daily basis. That makes no sense. True. Now Brandon Bell, after the visit to the man by the pitching coach Brent Strom, is one for three. And there have been many pitchers who have come back and have been fantastic. Matt Harvey, one of the latest, but he was out for about 17 or 18 months. And, and you know, from what we've read about many of these guys who have come back from Tommy John surgery, 
the extra four or five months between 12 months and we'll say 16, 17, 18 months is critical in regaining command. You can get velocity back after 12, but not command usually. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. But I would also like to have somebody do a report on how these guys after the Tommy John surgery are maintaining themselves or doing the preventative or preventative mm -hmm. workouts in between starts to make sure it doesn't happen again and keep that arm strong. True. Well, they worked so hard on rehab after the surgery. It, it's tough to maintain that kind of a workout regimen when they're back to playing again. Yeah, but you're expected to go out there and throw seven innings. It's tough to get that workout in, in between starts, but there's got to be some routine or regimen that will help them maintain that strength. Two and two. When Commissioner Rob Manfred was here last week, he was asked about medical information being made available to teams before the draft. Could there be some kind of a, an effort to bring all the players in uh, and get that medical information through physicals? And he said, well, it's really not necessary to do it that way because of electronic methods available these days. But he said that will be a topic that will come up in the next bargaining session when this uh, current labor agreement expires after 2016. That will be something that will be addressed. Don't they do that in football? Yes. The combine, there's yes, the combine. all the information on these guys. Right. It's a lot better way to make an educated guess or educated choice in the drafts. Yes. Swing and a miss, and Chapman gets a strikeout on Bell to end the top of the sixth inning. And it's still the Giants in front, eight to one. Every Wednesday night home game is one dollar hot dog Wednesday and the next dollar dog buffet is tomorrow when the Astros take on the Giants. For more information, visit Astros.com slash dollar dogs or call one 877 astros guys. Imagine this, Julia. You're sitting at home right now thinking, uh, gee, I'd like to come out tomorrow night. I could get a ticket for $19.86 in one of those selected seats, either field level or club level. And I could have dinner. I could get a dollar dinner with a hot dog. That's twenty dollars and eighty six cents. It's a no brainer. It is. Robbie Grossman takes ball one. He grounded out earlier. That one's in for a strike and it's one and one. Chris Heston has retired ten in a row and he leads it eight to one. He's given up two hits. Trying to square his record at three and three. One ball two strikes. Well would you say hot dog is the meal of choice for a lot of people. They come out. Isn't that the whole reason for coming out to the ball game? Pretty much. Strike three call, and that's number seven for Heston. 
is mowing down the Astros after the Castro two out homer in the second. Pretty much having his way with Astros hitters. Showing good movement on that fastball, running back over that inside corner. Actually, seen a pretty good changeup from Heston tonight, too. Mm -hmm. Marisnik has one for two. Strike one to Jake. This 20 and 12 start is tied for the second best in Astros history. They were 21 and 11 and 04 out of the gate. One and one. They got off to 20 and 12 starts in both 98 and 99. Two playoff years. One and two. The official score is changing the error to Altuve in the fifth inning. It's going to be uh, called a hit now for Posey and an RBI. So that'll change Colin McHugh's line, but not not the earned runs part of it. Just he allows seven hits instead of six and four two thirds. That gives Posey his 12th RBI of the year on the official scoring change. Count for Heston with Altuve on deck. Pirates beat the Phillies seven to two. AJ Burnett winning. He's two and one. Arisnik strikes out. That's number eight. Tomorrow night's pitching matchup is presented by Chevron. Care for your car. Old man Tim Hudson going for the San Francisco Giants. Still got it going with that sinker ball and. On the right hand side, you're going to see Brett Oberholzer making his first start of the season for the Houston Astros. Having issues with blisters, but he's back in action trying to lock down that fifth spot in the rotation for the Houston Astros. Altuve is for two. Here's strike one to Jose. Tim Hudson in his career against the Astros is 5 0 with a 1.25 ERA regular season. See the uh, suggested list of trades that Dan O'Dowd, former general manager of the Rockies, has put on MLB.com for five of the surprise contender teams, including the Astros. I've not seen that. Who's he going out to get? Cole Hamels. That'd be a good one to pick up. One and two. He has suggested Cole Hamels trade in Houston for prospects. It suggested that Troy Tulowitzki. Be traded from the Rockies to the Mets for young pitching. I can see that happening. Yeah. Scott Casimir going to the Cubs along with Jonathan Papelbon for prospects. And shot caught by Panic. And that is 13 straight retired by Heston with the Giants up 8 to 1.
inning. And we have a change on the mound. Will Harris coming in for Houston. Right hander who got off to a furious start this year and his ERA is still a microscopic 0.60 Blummer. Another good claim for the Houston Astros. Hasn't pitched in a while. So didn't pitch on that road trip at all. But still putting up great numbers with that fastball, curveball. Good late life on that fastball. Harris had not allowed any runs through 26 games dating back to last year. And that was 28 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings until giving up a home run to Pagaro of Texas here. That was six days ago on the last home stand. Justin Maxwell first up. That's strike one to J Max. Kevin Chapman in one and one third innings allowed two hits, one run, walking two and fanning three. 20,468 is the paid attendance tonight. Foul back. The Rockets playing down the street at Toyota Center. A lot of activity in the sports world in Houston on this Tuesday evening. The Pirates with their win are now 17 and 16. And Andrew McCutcheon is heating up. He hit his third home run. Jay Hay Harrison hit number three. He's off to a really slow start as well. He's hitting 177 right now. There are a lot of interstate travelers here to this point in the season. It's not a good thing. Maxwell strikes out. Our T-Mobile game changer. Was Marlon Gonzalez's error back in the fifth inning? Did a great job arranging to it. I guarantee if that same play happens tomorrow, he makes it. But on this ground ball tonight, just wasn't able to make that exchange. Did a good job of getting airborne. Just you can see, he couldn't get the handle on that ball to make a good, strong throw to Altuve. So if he had actually picked it, would have had Buster Posey at second base for that big out in that fifth inning. Yeah. Later changed to a hit. Now Crawford the batter. He lines one to left field. Grossman back. Whoa, the lights were a problem for him. He stayed with it for out number two. That ball was hit in a very precarious spot for Robbie. Yeah, that's not fun when you're out there knowing you got a guaranteed out flying at you, but at the same time you lose it in the lights. Good job of staying with it or guessing where it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it worked. Well, Matt Duffy's driven in five runs tonight. Three run double and a two run single. I had a question for you about that Marwin play. Very difficult play, no matter how you try to make it. Do most shortstops try that kind of a jump throw on that play? This day and age, post Derek Jeter, yes. Okay. And it's because Jeter was so good. I think it was because he was so effective with it. You'll see guys working on it before games. I remember taking ground balls with a guy in uh, San Diego named Khalil Green who purposely had the guy hit fungos that would force him into a situation to try and attempt these plays and get more comfortable with them. So when they happened in the game, it became routine. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, it's such a intricate play that if you don't make that exchange, that's what happens right, right there as opposed to. Uh, if he had maybe taken one more step and opened up a little bit, kept his feet on the ground and just kind of swung it over there, maybe had a better chance. Right. And once you leave your feet, you're forcing yourself to make that exchange perfect. Yeah, and it's like it's in, in basketball. It's like a guy who goes for a jump shot, leaves the ground, but then decides he wants to make a pass. It's not an easy play. That's tough. True. So you're throwing without your feet anchoring the throw, so it's all arm on that throw. It truly is. It is all arm. And if you can't get on top, you see there's a little bit of a tail on that ball because Marwin got off to that three-quarter side, almost uh, you know, sidearm that thing over to second base. If you can't get on top and really create that good firm throw, it's real tough mm -hmm. because all your momentum is going towards that left field area.
Spencer up the middle and that will get on into left center field for a two out single for Duffy. What a night for Duffy. Three hits and five runs batted in. Got himself a game winning hit the other night out there in San Francisco to help the Giants. Continuing it here tonight. You already hit on it. Five RBIs. Yeah, that game winner came in their last game Sunday, didn't it? Yeah. It's crazy how in this game it also how well you're going to do in a series depends on how hot the other team is or how not hot you are as a ball club and a lot of these uh, series wins have a lot to do with the timing that you catch these teams. Your Blanco ball one that is the absolute truth. Well timing was exactly what happened to both of the World Series contestants last year. They were good but not great during the regular season. They barely made the playoffs and then they got hot. Fly ball to left field. Grossman with a long run back, turning and now on the warning track. He has it for out number three. No runs a hit and the man left. Eight to one Giants. Years ago today, Joey Cora fouled off Alex Cora, I apologize, fouled off 14 straight pitches and finally connected on the 18th pitch of the at bat for a two run homer. Pretty miraculous, not in the sense that he fouled off that many pitches, but he actually hit a home run for me. <laughs> it's amazing. That is amazing. How frustrating it's got to be as a pitcher to watch a guy do this. Clement gave it up. Eight to one, the Giants lead. Luis Falbuena, the batter, he's 0 for 2. There's strike one. Remember that game in Cleveland? Ricky Gutierrez versus Bartolo Colon. Ricky fouled off a lot of pitches. He had something like a 21 pitch at bat that night. It was just something to watch. It's incredible. One and one. Back when Bartolo could really get it up there. High, high 90s. One and two. And now he's still getting great <laughs> results with what? Maybe mid 80s? I was going to say, he's just as effective at 85, 88 miles an hour as he was back then throwing 92, 95. And I don't think he's added any wrinkles, has he? He just has a fastball that for some reason nobody can clock. No, only facially. <laughs> Did you see him in the dugout showing off his <laughs> bowl full of jelly to his teammates? <laughs> oh yeah. He was turned into quite the character like that guy. Well, you know, there's some guys and there's strikeout number nine. Like Cologne and Mickey Lolich who just do better when they have a little midriff bulge. Cut that fastball Astro hit left-handed hitters are getting up on it. Out of his hand, it looks like it's coming at your rib cage. The second you raise your arms to take the pitch, it breaks right back over the inside corner of the plate, freezing you. Evan Gaddis is 0 for 2. In the last 21 innings, the Astros had three hits and two runs. 
Strike one to Gaddis with Rasmus on deck. Tigers rallied in the tenth to beat the Twins two to one. Detroit's now 20 and 13. Alfredo Simon gave Brad Osmus a good start tonight. It's out to center field. Pagan without number two. Well, on his 90th birthday, Yogi Berra did make it down to the Yogi Berra Museum in New Jersey. Nice proclamation from the state of New York and also the state of New Jersey for Yogi. Good stuff. I had a chance to meet him around 2005, 2006 at a charity event. What a lovable guy. Yeah. He has been adored down through the years by so many, and he was uh, one of the World War II heroes from that invasion of Normandy. He was a gunner on one of the ships. Goodness, the stories he could probably tell and has told. True, I would love to see him get that presidential medal. Yeah. Very deserving. There are only about eight or nine baseball players who've received it. Ernie Banks got it. He was the last one. One ball, one strike. Tony Sip warming up for Houston. Well, you know, when Yogi was a coach here, we got a chance to sample a few of his witticisms. People would ask him, what time is it, Yogi? And he would say, you mean now? <laughs> Seriously. That's a shot to center field. Pagan with a catch. And that's 16 in a row set down by Heston, 8 to 1 Giants. Night. Connect with other young professionals while enjoying join an extended happy hour in the Bud Patio from 5 to 6.30 p.m. The next Budweiser Young Professionals Night is this Thursday, May 14th. For more info, visit astros.com slash young professionals or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Okay. Hey, Julia, you had a series off for a change, a rare time <laughs> off for you. How was it? Rare weekend off. Yeah? It was good. I was in a friend's wedding. I even... Gave a maid of honor speech, guys. Oh, did you? Nailed it. Nervous. You nailed it? Did you have to write it? Nailed it. I wrote it. That is and I wrote really it. something. <laughs> Proud of you, Julia. Glad to see you finally back at work. Oh, come on. Look who's <laughs> talking up there. No, it's good to be back. I missed you guys. We missed you. Tony Sip, 2 0 with a 0 0.68 ERA in 12 games. Comes in for the eighth inning after Harris had a. One inning, one hit, no run line with no walks and one strikeout. Joaquin Arias up there pinch hitting for the Giants now. For Aoki, the DH. And there's strike one to Arias. Cubs lead the Mets 4 0. They're in the bottom of the seventh at Wrigley Field, which has some of the bleachers back now. Chris Bryant hit the first home run into the newly constructed bleachers last night. 
Well, the young players in the game. Noah Syndergaard made his major league debut tonight for the Mets. Five and a third innings, six hits, three earned runs. Highly touted right-hander. Joining that very youthful and hard-throwing rotation. They should be fun to watch. So many good young players, Plummer. Really are. Fun to watch. It was interesting to watch Bryant go deep and then Rizzo hit back to back home runs. That's right. Cup fans with a glimmer of hope. Yeah. The youth they have. You bet. Very strong future, it would appear, for that club. Cubs and the Astros have had kind of similar patterns the last few years. Jake Arietta is throwing a gem at the Mets tonight. Seven innings of one hit shutout baseball. Chris Coughlin hit his fourth homer. Chris Bryant got his first major league triple. I was reading a story in Sports Illustrated. Chris Bryant's dad is still a guy who teaches hitting. Hitting lessons. There was actually a really good article in the New York Times like yesterday about the same thing you're probably talking about how back in Las Vegas he's got a huge batting cage, still instructs, but uh, one of his biggest clients still is Chris. Mm -hmm. Still works with his son. There were some interesting quotes in that article for me. Very. About how he approaches hitting. Very much so. He's from the Ted Williams School, uppercut swing. Fly ball out to left center field, looping in. Here's Marisnik going for it, and he runs right to it. Didn't have to leave his feet to make that outstanding catch, but maybe StatCast will tell us how far he ran. Covered some ground. Here's Chris Bryant with a triple tonight. Going to the opposite field, and one of those interesting things for me is that Chris Bryant said he's up there trying to hit fly balls, as Brownie said with that uppercut. Launched that one into that right field corner. Showing flashes of speed, getting all the way to third base. True. Joe Panic is the batter. Well, uh, Bryant evidently gets some texts from his dad when he's hitting too many ground balls, and the text will say, "Hit the ball in the air." Panic has a hit and a walk tonight. There's strike one. Ted Williams believed in that uppercut swing, and that was to combat the pitcher throwing on a downward angle. That's right. So his idea was put your bat plane on the same plane as the pitch. Worked for Ted. Certainly did. What was your general approach to hitting? How did you want to, to guide your swing into the ball? Well, when I was playing, I didn't have hitting coaches that talked about exit velocities and, <laughs> and launch angles. <laughs> That, that was saved really? for Cape Canaveral in the Captain Space Center. <laughs> Backhanded by Carter. <laughs> he gets it to sip. Two outs. So my philosophy was I was going to do my best to be ready to swing as hard as I possibly could and just find a way to get the barrel on the baseball as often as I could. Uh, I, I tried to oversimplify it, and I was a line drive guy. I believe that swinging down created that backspin to get some extra life on the ball and carry a little bit more. But uh, we didn't have the uh, quite the enhanced vision of hitting as uh, guys do nowadays. Very scientific. Angel Pagan has a couple of hits, two for four tonight. Now, there was a guy named uh, Tim Galway who wrote a book about tennis many years ago called Tennis the Inner Game. And his theory was that if you wanted to learn how to play tennis, it wasn't uh, a matter of going to a pro and taking lessons. It was just watching a good player play. And you would just absorb that and go out on the court and either would you be able to play like that or you wouldn't be able to play. And the lessons weren't going to help you a whole lot if you couldn't play. Interesting. Completely unscientific. That approach. is, uh, yeah. <laughs> go to the video. <laughs> But how many times have you watched somebody do something and you've never done it before? Oh, that doesn't look too tough. And it doesn't quite work out that way. Ain't that the truth? But did you ever have a difficult time at a sport that you thought would be easy? Yeah. Which one? Golf. Well, that's true. 
drives we me all, nuts. We all do that, but you're pretty good. Uh, well, you're being awfully kind and you're lying to everybody that's listening because when that ball is moving at 90 miles an hour, I've got a chance. You put that stinking thing on a tee and I, I've got issues. Line drive over shortstop and that dunks into left center field. A lot of people are going to say, Plummer, the ball is stationary. It should be a lot easier than hitting a 95 mile per hour moving round object. Again, what are you talking about? All good in theory. <laughs> True. <laughs> then you put my brain between that ball and the club, and we've got issues. Well, you know, if if the average golf fairway had this a 90 degree angle <laughs> and didn't have any trees in that space, then it would be a little bit easier, right? Yes, and I've got to correct my launch angle and <laughs> a lot of other things. Buster Posey, the batter. There's strike one. Kansas City leads at Texas. It's 5-4 in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Kansas City team has a batting average of about 290 right now. That is incredible. It really is. Fly ball to right field. Rasmus backing up. And in the eighth inning, it's no runs a hit in the man left. Giants lead at eight to one. Testing's night. Doing a great job baffling Astros hitters. Got a good curveball going. Excellent movement on that changeup. He's actually frozen quite a few Astro hitters with that fastball that runs right back over the inside corner to left handed hitters. Astro hitters with no answer to their first time facing Chris Heston. Seven innings, two hits, one run, no walks, nine strikeouts. He's retired 16 in a row since the Jason Castro second inning homer. Chris Carter's 0 for 2, a fly ball to center, a ground ball to third. Castro on deck, Gonzalez due up third in the inning. And that is strike one. Very brief two game interleague series to start this homestand for the Astros. Carter fouls it 0 and 2. Here are some batting averages from the Kansas City Royals lineup tonight Escobar 300, Mustakas 317, Kane 317, Osmer 326, Morales 303. Sounds like a fun lineup to face. <laughs> Man. One and two. Nick Martinez didn't think so. Although he gave up three earned runs in six and a third innings. That's not a bad start. Pretty good. Struck him out looking. That is now ten punch outs for Heston. Our TXU power player of the game. This is one and only 
Jason Castro got himself a changeup down in the zone. Did a good job of keeping those hands back. Eventually threw that barrel at the ball and squared it up nicely. Snuck it into that bleacher in right field for the only run of the game for the Houston Astros. And now this one goes out to center field. It's caught by Pagan. Two outs. Eston nearing 100 pitches for the night. Be Marwin Gonzalez facing him. He's 0 for 2. Giants do not have a complete game yet this season. Robbie Grossman's on deck. Bouncer back to the mound. Eston tosses it over to Bell. It's a six pitch eighth inning. And he is in line for a CG tonight. Well, he's retired 19 in a row and he leads it 8 to 1. Houston Methodist helps us get to know Marwin, a.k.a. Margo Gonzalez. It's a good player to watch growing up for a shortstop in the big leagues. And Omar Vizquel, favorite actor Denzel Washington. Favorite meal, chicken with rice and beans. Can't go wrong with that. That's a good combination. Remember the play of... Uh... Ms. Kell and Robbie Alomar pulled on the Astros in Cleveland years ago, interleague play. It was a slick double play, but, but those guys were so good they would get bored with making plays uh, with their glove the routine way. Brandon Belt leads it off in the ninth inning. Samuel Deduno on the mound, ball one. So Ms. Kell flipped the ball to Alomar at second, and instead of catching it in his glove, he just took it off the back of his glove and relayed it on to first. Got to dress it up for the fans, Brownie. Mm. One ball, one strike to Bell. I can I can do that in warm-ups. Yeah. I've done it in pregame stuff, but I've never had the guts to do it in a game. That takes some guts. <laughs> but I guess being a you know ten-time plus All-Star helps you get away with some well, things like that. Yeah, you, you must be awfully good if you're making a play like that. Yeah, he was trying to maintain a spot on the roster. <laughs> no, yeah, you don't want to mess up a play <laughs> that way. <laughs> Get you the wrong kind of noticed out there. Yes. Two balls, two strikes. White Sox lead the Brewers three to two in the top of the ninth at Miller Park. Chris Sale has struck out 11 in eight innings. Brewers have perked up the last week or so. Greg Council has taken over that club. That's a strikeout, and Belt is out number one. Well, they do know had a couple of turns through the rotation. Now back in the bullpen. 
start was here against Colby Lewis six days ago of Texas. Justin Maxwell the batter. It's a big month for the Astros with all these home games in May. Strike to J Max. Rasmus comes over toward the right field line. Two down. Show us where you root for the Astros and win great prizes from the Astros and Root Sports. Post your pictures with Orbit on social media and tag the Astros and your cable or satellite provider. Don't forget to use the hashtag where is Orbit. Head to Astros.com slash where is Orbit for more information. Brandon Crawford bats. One for three with an RBI today, and there is ball one to him. And the Giants will certainly come out tomorrow night with a rested bullpen. Tim Hudson on the mound. He's won 215 games in his career. One ball, one strike. George Springer was one for four at last report for Corpus Christi in San Antonio. Sounds as if things are going well and what could be a one game rehab assignment for him with the concussion disabled list. Shot on the ground. Marlon got in front of it. Low throw. And Carter scoops it. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Eight to one Giants. Your low fare now at southwest.com. And brought to you by Orkin Pest Control down to a science. The aquarium across town. It's Giants 8, Astros 1. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Astros will have the 9 1 and 2 hitters due up. Heston going for a complete game. Grossman is 0 for 2. Pitch number 100 is outside ball one. Heston tries to square his record at three and three and get back on the track he set in his first three starts of the year. The appeal went to third base and that's a check swing call by Marvin Hudson. It's two and zero. Oh. Now three balls no strikes to Grossman. Washington is playing at Arizona tonight. Three to one Arizona after three. Strasburg has allowed four hits and three runs in three innings. A home run to Inciarte. Strike makes it 3 1. 19 in a row have been set down by Heston since the Castro two out homer in the second inning. That's 
picks number 20. And panic to Bell. Let's see what happened in Dodger Stadium with Giancarlo Stanton of Miami. He hit it out of Dodger Stadium, Blummer. <laughs> I think I could watch that over and over again. Mm. That's a big time bomb. One nothing Miami in the bottom of the second tonight. Jake Marisnik is one for three. Ball one to Jake. Just begs the question how many people have actually done that at Dodger Stadium? I think Willie Stargell did it. Yeah, it's been a handful. Not yeah, that's too I many. remember Willie Stargell being one of those guys. Mm -hmm. But there can't be too many. That's no. a graveyard out there. Yes, it is. And Heron's on the mound tonight for Miami. That was Stanton's eighth home run of the year. Came off Bolsinger, the Dodger starter. Tap to third. Short hop play. Duffy. Duffy has driven in five runs tonight. He makes that play. Round number two. Not an easy play. Chopper, she gets a good jump. The decision is immediate. Got to go get it on a do or die with Marisnik running. Got to have a little luck in there, too. You see that ball using every part of that glove as he scoops it up. Takes his time and a couple extra steps to make a good, strong throw to make sure to get Marisnik. Altuve is 0 for 3, lined out the second in the sixth inning. And a strike one to Jose. Eston trying for his first major league complete game. Altuve leads in hits with 45 in the American League. Runs that one foul, 0 and 2. Oakland has the early lead on Boston 4 0 there in the middle of the third in Oakland. As the A's try to reverse their tough fortunes. They're 12 and 22 now. Altuve flips one out of play. Astros are hoping their bats show up tomorrow night. Tim Hudson, the starter against them, and it'll be the debut. Brett Overholzer with Houston this season. Altuve <laughs> puts it in the air. Crawford underneath. And that's a two hitter for Chris Heston. He retires everybody after the Castro homer in the second inning. 22 in a row retired at the end of the game, 8-1 Giants.